So random next in the Skaven taking on Maximo in the Vampire Coast. This is match point for Maximo. So random Nix has to win this to stay alive. So take down that scorecard and uh, we'll get right into it, folks. So starting with the Skaven, our blue player this time. We're going to have Clan Rat Spears. Looks like we're going to have four of them. We're going to have the Clan Vulcan Tail Slashers as well four units or five units of Skaven Slave Spears. Now, other than this, we're going to have ourselves some Gutter Runners. It looks like one Gutter Runner, one with Poison. And we're going to have two Warplock Gazelles. Now, we're going to have some Rat Ogres here. It looks like three to be precise of these hulky monstrosities. He's then going to have two units of Poison Wind Globideers. Now, for the leadership of this army, we have a Gracier Plague. Pretty much the same loadout as last time. Warpstone Scroll, Arcane Conduit, Burman Tide. Um, the dreaded 13th spell this time, though. Unholy Clamor, a Scorch with Plague Rash. Alright, that's interesting Skaven build, so I think that's going to round it out. Now, what about the Vampire Coast? So, we're going to have four units. Zombie Pirate Deckham Mob with Pole Arms. The Tide of Scold. Gonna have some zombie pirate gunnery mob and then two zombie pirate gunnery mob with bombs. I love them. Now, other than that, gonna have some carronades. Looks like we have two carronades back here. We'll see how they fare. They should be an effective counter to the poison wing globideers, if anything. Now, other than this, coming over to the monsters and heroes, we have the night terrors, ROR Moran Ghouls, that do cause terror. He's going to have a vampire fleet captain. On top of a Krabby with taunt, uh, taunt, Speed of Lycos, as well as Power Stone, Invocation of the Heck, and the Drowned Dead. Spell of Lycos, I love it. Um, Luther Harkin up in the air on his Death Street Terror guys is going to have Horn Swaggle, as well as Power Siphon. And that will be it. So, time to see how this works out. Uh, both players forming up on the same area of the battlefield. Um, or same side of the battlefield here on the western edge. So we'll see how it turns out. But yeah, I, I do think the Vampire Coast is winning the artillery battle. They're clearly going to be the ones who have who forced this game into them with those carronades. Speaking of formations, though, I do like both the players' formations. Both of them have gone for that staggered line approach. You know, you have the slaves up front for the Skaven, supported by gunner runners with poison um, and regular variant, who have a net ability when units are near down that slows them down. Uh, also, the poison will slow them down. So a nice front skirmishing engagement, and, you know, can pull through the safety of the slaves. Back that up with the clan rat infantry. And then in the very back, you keep your rat ogres and the other two spearmen. And that just provides a lot of tools um, to dive down pin into units in place, which is basically the aim of this army and allow the warp lock gazelles and the poison wing mortars to do as much work as possible. And now they're all going to be shooting at poor Luther Harkin. What did he ever do to you? But also on the flip end for the Vampire Coast, um, I also like their formation a lot too. Once again, checkerboard formation allows lovely avenues of fire for all these units. And then as soon as the Skaven start closing the gap, get on top of the front line of zombie pirate deckhand mob, that's when the bombers start coming down and doing a ton of work. And then, yeah, there's at least another three layers um, after that of defenses for this uh, Vampire Coast army. You know, the t last bastion being the Tide of Skold and the Night Terrors. Cannons firing away, and it looks like... I'm not even sure where they're firing at right now, to be honest, but... Here comes the Poison Wind Mortars, and oh, they're just so good at hitting these loosely, uh, these loose formations of infantry with that damage over time. Yep, two volleys. 
below half health. It's crazy. No, oh, that cannonball just hit a rat ogre directly in the face and knocked its corpse back into <laughs> the Warflock Gazelles. And right now, I think the Vampire Coast is playing this exactly how they want to. They're letting Luther Harkin soak up all the fire from the Skaven. Um, I think the one thing that they probably didn't anticipate and that's biting him in the ass right now is how much damage the Poison Wind Mortars are doing. In fact, I would have been targeting them with my Carinade from the beginning. Because, yeah, they're just going to keep on deleting units. They are targeting the leader. Obviously a great target. Um, but he is trying his best to hide back here and kind of maneuver around, avoid as many cannonballs as possible, but... Yeah, it's just these Poison Wind Mortars, they are <laughs> such value. And I wonder what their ammunition is like, so... 11 still. 7 ammunition. Okay. So it's not going to be able to kill the entire army, but it's going to be able to do a ton of damage. It is very inaccurate. I will give it that. <laughs> Which is good, because if it wasn't, it would be devastating. Because even a little nick, and boom, that damage over time goes into effect. Yeah, Skaven definitely getting the better of the skirmish engagement. Like, clearly the Vampire Coast won the ranged fight and, you know, like, I mean, um, the long range and, like, forced the Skaven to him. But once the Skaven closed the gap, I mean, they've deleted a bomber. They've deleted almost two units of zombie pirate gunnery mob at this point. Um, they've done a ton of damage to some of the frontline infantry. And, you know, they still have a couple more volleys to go. So, Poison Wind Mortars... So far, the MVP in this battle, as far as I'm concerned. Look at that. Now they're targeting these ones, and... Yeah, Poison Wind Mortars are just doing so much work. It's kind of insane. I definitely don't agree with targeting the Carinade. Keep killing off all that gunnery infantry like you're doing. I mean, both players seem to think they have the edge, um, but it just seems weird to me that the Vampire Coast doesn't try to close the gap a little bit so they can start actually using their gunnery mob and stuff rather than just having them sit out of effective range. It's a shame, and you know, they've just lost so much of their firepower already, and here they go again. Look, the bomber's getting targeted again, and... Uh, Yeah, the Poison Wind Mortars are just setting the pace of this battle. Holy hell. Look at that. Just keep sapping away at strength. I mean, the Vampire Coast got to get something going together here pretty soon, like ASAP. I know he's you just content at fulfilling the attacking role with the cannon, but... It's not really any benefit to him, as far as I'm concerned. I think he lost his opportunity to get any cost value out of the majority of these range units because he didn't close the gap until they were all dead. Can you imagine how many kills like some bombers could get? Those guys are devastating against the lightly armored, um, loose formation of the Skaven. And yeah, this is just devastating. Looks like the... Uh, Vampire Coast is going to go into battle with one arm tied behind their back, basically.
Now they're going after the Tide of Skull. They definitely call this the Battle of the Mortars. Or the Slaughter of the Mortars, more like it. Yeah, like so much value. What are the kills here? 43, 86. Not the craziest kills, but you guys have seen the damage they've laid out. Oh no. That looks like it was targeting Luther Harkin, maybe. Or just really inaccurately targeting the Tide of Skilled. Balance of power is dead even. And now the front lines look like they're about to engage. Luther Harkin getting a bit too close for comfort, and he's getting a lot of fire from those Warpstone Giselles, uh, Warlock, Warplike Giselles. And his Warpstone Scroll is here, so if this Plague Priest gets near him, he can target him with the Warpstone Scroll. Curious to see if we're going to see that happen anytime soon, or if it already happened and I just missed it. Meanwhile, the Morgals are getting targeted by those Warplike Giselles now. And uh, looks like they may be taking some significant damage. However, here they are coming into combat. We will see if they get there in time to help with the terror route. There goes the terror on them. And these guys don't look... Oh, yep, there goes the terror route on these guys too now. And so these rat ogres are now in a very precarious position because all of their supporting infantry is routing. And that's going to leave them alone with uh, some pole arms here and the night terrors. Over here... Luther Harkin diving into combat against uh, the Plague Priest. And oh, look at that, the dreaded 13th spell. <laughs> Warpstone Scroll has gone down on him. He is minus 48% speed. And now is the time for the Skaven to strike. They could kill him here. Looks like they're going to go. They're giving it their all. And oh, the Warp Black Giselle fire and the Gutter Runner fire. It is devastating as Luther Harkin going to die right now guys there goes the warp stone to scroll its effects wearing off he's back to full speed but oh man he is getting low on health 600 hp oh my god zigzag zigzag he's crumbling oh my god i don't think he's gonna get out of this one. Oh, some beautiful dodge though luther you can do it oh man He's got to be so close. No, oh, he's still crumbling. Oh, there he goes. Crumbled out of existence. Luther Harkin is dead. Which means the Vampire Coast only has their Vampire Fleet Captain to lead him. Thankfully, they at least have that. The Dreaded 13th spell summon going to go out of existence right at the last minute but yeah the gunner runners now still have ammunition and that's gonna yeah I feel like the Skaven are gonna be able to take this home now whoa what the hell happened here just the cannons oh man I totally missed that when did that happen holy cow those carronades just completely devastated the grace here. I mean, I see nothing else nearby which could have done that to it. So, oof. I totally missed that. Yeah, that could be a game-changing scenario if the Vampire Coast was able to kill off the grace here. But looks like the grace here will survive. Just rallied. And now the carronades are compromised by rat ogres. And this one actually only had one shot left anyways, but... Honestly, one shot is what it all will take probably to kill that Grace here over there in the back who's sitting on 159 HP. Oh, man. Like, this is still a very close game. Dead even. You get Terror on the Vampire Coast side. Numbers and firepower on the Skaven side. 
unfortunately the only firepower they have is gutter runners so not the best distance but like against the Morangols when they get close against other units from the Vampire Coast they should be just fine right here we're gonna see the zombie pirate deck can mobs trying to chase down or black Giselles, but it looks like their summon is about to run out and oh oh no this is bad because I think there was two rat ogre sent over here and it looks like both of them have been dealt with now yeah because these rat ogres aren't going to enjoy fighting the the night terrors and I think yeah that'd be both of the rat ogres we saw come over here to deal with the cannons getting dealt with and yeah this balance of power just doesn't know where it wants to be holy hell this is so close Gracier of Plague keeping it, doing his best to stay out of the way, remaining conspicuous. I don't know, guys. What's going to happen? Vampire Coast doing a good job of regrouping its forces. One of the Carronades is still alive. I think the other one got taken out completely, but they have one more shot on this bad boy. Clan rat's finally breaking. Oh, dude. One shot, guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, I gotta get out of here. And look, there's the cannon's firing range. Oh, looks like it must have turned or something. Going all haywire. He's walking a fine line. Gray's here staying just barely out of range. Over here, Gutter Runner is getting on top of the Vampire Fleet Captain. Throwing some Shoryukens into him. Doing some good damage. Oh, wow. There he goes. He's turning around now. Could present an opportunity for these gutter runners to focus on hitting him in the back. The armor of these guys is decent at 120, but man, yeah, Skaven's still getting a ton of damage done. Invocation of the heck getting popped. So that should keep them stable, but um Yeah, this is anyone's game, man, because that heal just completely saved the balance of power for the Vampire Coast. They are actually in the lead now. And every single one of these scaving units, for the most part, is blinking. Or close to blinking, which means they're wavering. And, you know, if Vampire Coast just throws the Morgols in there, I think Terror will win the day. And uh, the Carronade, with its one round still not fired, just patiently keeping this plagues here at a very respectable distance because he knows one shot and he's done 159 hp uh-uh can't risk it and if he dies then it's probably just army losses instantly for the rest of this game and forces all right zombie pirate deckhand mob getting summoned Rat Ogre is getting terrorized by Morgols over here. The cannon still sitting patiently, waiting. <gasps> this could be it, guys. Okay. It looks like it may not matter either way, but if that cannon gets the shot off, it could seal the fate. And look at this. There's a lot of routing going on, but the Vampire Fleet Captain is over here by himself. And there goes the cannonballs. Third one did it. Third time's a charm. Army loss is kicking in. A great game. An epic game. And congratulations to our Vampire Coast player here. 
BBB Maximo, who yeah, probably is chief, is going to be winning that 2-0 in a very, very, very close match. 